In this video, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to run a regression in R um, and just how to get the standard output that most regression packages obtain. To even run a regression, we need to read in data. Um, remember, we can, we can load the foreign library and then use this read.dta command to read in, uh, read in data from a stata type file. Let's, let's go ahead and read in some data. We're going to store it into an object called earn.dta. Let's, let's, uh, let's run these commands uh, for exploring the data. We can get the names and we can, earn, we can learn more about, about some of the variables. So, so highlight, run line or selection. And we see that there are three variables in this, in this data set. There's wage, something that looks like education, something that looks like experience. Uh, if we want to know sort of the, uh, if we want to know more about this, we could ask about the length of the data frame, namely the length of the first column of data. So row, column, notation. Remember this is a data frame, it's also a matrix. Uh, this can tell us how many observations there are. Looks like we have 4,000 observations in this data set. It's not, not a real data set, but rather one that I created for the purpose of just illustrating um, different things. So let's, uh, let's introduce uh, how to run a regression. The command is this lm command. And this lm command, lm stands for linear model. Um, it would be nice to call it regress, but linear model is, the, is another way to refer to a regression. And so... We're going to use the lm command because that's what is pre-installed in R. It has a couple of key components that it just can't do without. First one is the formula. You need to have a formula for your regression. This is going to be dependent variable, response variable, tilde, explanatory variable, or a set of explanatory variables. And we'll explore kind of what that means in the context of this data set. And then you also need to sort of reference which data frame in R you're talking about. So R has the capacity to work with different data frames at the same time, but what that means is you need to specify which data frame you're talking about. So what that means is when you run a regression, you need to tell R which data frame it's going to use for the regression. So that's what the, uh, the data equals your data frame object uh, part of this command does. So let's go and run this and we'll uh, store uh, our regression in this object called earn reg one. So that is a linear models object and you can apply different commands to this linear models object. For example, you could produce, produce the standard summary output Here's the standard summary out. We get our estimates, our standard errors, our t-values. This is just sort of standard, uh, every run-of-the-mill regression output from a regression program. It uh, conducts the standard hypothesis tests that you'd want to see. So you've got your F statistic. You've got the p-value for that omnibus F statistic. Uh, multiple R squared, adjusted R squared, uh, even residual standard error. That's the uh, square root of mean squared error uh, doesn't have an ANOVA table. So if you want the ANOVA table, you can ask for that separately. And here's the ANOVA table. So uh, now we've got sort of sort of the full suite of output that most regression uh, software programs uh, offer. But in future videos, I'll talk about how to plot. It's going to be useful for plotting, for diagnostics of our regression objects to have them in, in an object where we can reference them. Um, we can easily extract residuals from this. We don't need to uh, do any um, sort of exotic post-estimation type things. Uh, suppose you wanted to run a regression uh, without, without the constant in, in the regression. So notice we have the intercept here. And suppose you have a model that makes a prediction that or for whatever reason you don't want to uh, have an intercept in your regression, you can force it to not have an intercept. Don't, uh, don't do this uh, unless you know exactly what you're doing. But there are two ways to do that in R. Um, you can go zero plus in your formula command. 
so 0 plus your explanatory variable, or you can do your explanatory variable minus 1. Both of these mean run the regression without the constant. So here's, here's the table for uh, the one where we were subtracting 1. You can also see the nice thing is when you summarize your object, it tells you what formula you use to, uh, to create it. Let's scroll up and we see we get the same uh, we get the same output. The only difference is that in the call it was a little bit different description of uh, of how things worked out, but you see the exact same estimates. You may ask yourself, well, how in the world do I run a uh, well? Yeah, you may you may ask yourself, well, how in the world do I if I wanted instead to run a regression of education minus one instead of uh, I, why did they take that away from me what why can't I run a regression of education minus one um, it turns out you have to you, you have to actually embed if you're going to do math okay so when you're doing math inside of uh, a linear model object say you didn't really want to fit a regression without a constant what you really wanted to do was uh, you realize that your definition of education wasn't quite right, and maybe you have a good interpretation for the constant, but you, but it's only a good interpretation if you subtract a certain, if you subtract one from education for whatever reason. What you wanted to do was run the regression of the variable education minus one. This is what you do. You wrap uh, around your math inside of your linear model command, you wrap around that math this uh, this formula, uh, and then it treats this whole thing, this i educ minus one, as the variable of interest. So this is not the same as the as the earn reg three where we ran the regression without the constant. This is actually doing math and then using this variable, uh, this education minus one, as the explanatory variable. So let's let's see how this works out. So we ran that. Now let's just run uh, the summary to see what ends up coming about here. And notice what we end up with is we get an intercept and we have a variable called i edu, educ minus one. That's going to be a uh, variable where we subtracted one from every education value and we ended up having um, that is that is going to be our, our explanatory variable in that regression uh, there's another uh, bit of math that you could do to do a different bit of math you can do the natural log of wage so if it's if it's pretty obvious that this is going to be a mathematical function like for example it's log or exponential um, you can you can use the built-in commands uh, and, and the functions inside of R uh, to uh, to express that. So maybe we want to run log of wage as our explan or as our response variable, and use education as as the explanatory variable. We could run this regression. Notice that's going to work, but that's a way to transform um, our our variables. Uh, without having to create new variables. So that's a nice strength of R um, over Stata, for example. So you can see that now we've run this regression. Um, now you can see it's log wage here is the response. Uh, and this is a regression, uh, regression output from using log wage as the response variable. So it turns out that there are other things that you want to do with regression other than simple linear regression with transformations. You may also want to do multiple regression. Now here's how you do multiple regression. Um, if you have multiple explanatory variables, remember our data frame had education and experience, uh, names educ and expert. And the way you do this is you just, in your formula statement, you put a plus sign between each variable and it generalizes. You can continue to use math inside of this LM command. Uh, so you can do a variety of other things. But this is, uh, this is really the basic way to extend it, um, to do multiple regression. The plus sign tells R that there's another variable coming. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, let's take a look at the table of output. Again, table of output is standard. Uh, just 
gives us another row uh, for each variable that we end up running. So the next thing that you might think about when, when you think about doing uh, regressions is maybe you, you're interested in doing interactions. Perhaps you, uh, you want to uh, specify a model where you have ed not only the effect of education and the effect of experience, but also the uh, effect of education times experience. Well, there are a couple of different ways to introduce interactions in R. Uh, the first one is using a time sign in your, um, um, in, in your formula command. And here, let's run this and see what ends up happening. So now we need to use a summary command. And now after running a summary command, we'll see that we didn't just get the interaction. It looked like you would just get the interaction, education times experience. But we also got the main effects. We got education, experience, and this interaction between education and experience. So it turns out that if you want to have both main effects and the interaction between those effects, all you need to do in your formula statement is put the uh, two variables times each other. And that's going to give you a full interaction between um, those two variables. So, so that's, that's if you wanted a full interaction. Um, but suppose you wanted it to be weird and you just wanted a partial interaction. In fact, you knew that experience didn't have an effect on its own and it only had an effect through education and you wanted for some reason to save degrees of freedom and only wanted like one of the simplest regression model you wanted uh, or possible and you did not want experience in your regression uh, as a main effect you only wanted education experience and education well, the way you do that is use this colon notation the colon between two variables says just use this interaction don't use uh, the main effects or the small, the lower level interactions. Don't fully interact this with the other factor. So that's uh, that's what this uh, that's what this partial interaction notation means here. So let's uh, let's go and run this and make sure that this gives us uh, what what we think it will. Uh, I'm just gonna place the five with a six because this is earn reg six, and what we'll see is we'll see that we got two variables here. One is education, one is education interacted with experience, and we, this is a way we can e express the regression model without using the main effect of experience. <clears throat> Hopefully this was a good in introduction to uh, how to use the linear model command in R, and um, there, there'll be future videos on sort of different aspects of how to uh, how to do regression diagnostics, how to plot, uh, how, to, how to exploit the structure of linear models objects as well.